Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, we can continue, sir. Yes, yes. So this was the example which we have been uh, discussing before. Okay, simply support the beam with central point load, and we have completed the integration. So I found the maximum deflection. Okay, and then we'll go to the next example. Yeah, simply support the beam with uniformly distributed load. Okay. So the first step is to find the support reactions, okay, to find the support reactions. Madam, whether, whether screen visible? Yeah, it's visible, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. So to find the support reactions, let us use the static equations of equilibrium, sigma v equal to 0 and sigma m equal to 0. So using sigma v equal to 0, that is sum of all vertical forces equal to 0 with the sign convention, all upward forces as positive. Ra is upward, therefore plus, and Rb is upward, therefore plus, Ra plus Rb. Then we have UDL. In case of UDL, the force is given by intensity multiplied by length over which it acts. Therefore, Ra plus Rb minus WDL, okay, minus WDL, because uh, W is intensity and it acts over a length of L, and minus sign is downward load, so minus WL equals 0. Therefore, Ra plus Rb equals WL, and using sigma M equal to 0, that is sum of all moments with sign convention clockwise as positive and taking moments of all forces about A. So if we take moment about A, we have uh, this UDL and this reaction. So the moment produced by UDL will be force multiplied by distance, force is W into L and distance is L by 2. And it produces clockwise moment, therefore WL into L by 2 minus RB into L equals 0, therefore RB equals to WL by 2. Substituting this in equation, you will get w, Rea is also equal to WL by 2. Okay? And by symmetry also, we can uh, tell them, tell our students how to find the reactions. So by symmetry, Rea should be equal to Rb equal to total load divided by 2. So total load is intensity multiplied length is the total load. So WDL divided by 2. So WL by 2 will be the reaction for both supports. Now to find Mx. So bending moment at section Xx. So when you want section xx will be uh, the moment produced by this point load as well moment produced by this udl need to be considered okay so moment produced by this point load will be wl by 2 wl by 2 is the reaction and distance is the x and this produces left clockwise moment okay this is to the left side of your sex of our section and it produces clockwise moment therefore wl by 2 into x that will be the moment produced by this reaction component and this UDL will produce a moment about the section. So that will be W into X is the force and X by 2 is the distance between the section and the resultant of the load or the CG of the loading system. Okay. Therefore, MXX will be WLX by 2 minus WX squared by 2. And we have EAD squared by DX squared equal to minus MXX. Therefore, EAD squared by DX squared equal to minus of bracket WLX by 2 minus WX squared by 2. And here, in this example, we will be using double integration only. There, will be, there won't be any uh, use of the uh, Macaulay's concept. That is, we don't have any portion. We have only single equation. Therefore, only when we have uh, two portions, more than one portion, then Macaulay's method need to be used or becomes essential arises, the condition arises. Here, we can you know, go by uh, double integration uh, alone. Okay? Double integration itself is enough for this uh, single portion, if you have a single portion equation. Okay, so EA d squared by dx squared equal to minus WLX by 2 plus WX squared by 2. This is equation 1. Integrating equation 1, EA y equal EA d by dx equal to minus WLX squared by 4 plus WX cubed by 6 plus constant of integration C1. That is equation 2. Then integrating equation 3, uh, equation 2 will be getting EA y equal to this equation. And then substituting the boundary conditions. Boundary condition will be getting C1 and C2. So 
So substituting C1 and C2 and getting the general equation for slope as EA dA by dx equal to minus WLX by 24 plus WX cube by 6 plus WLQ by 24. And the general equation for deflection will be this. Then, as usual, if we want to find slope at the support points A and B, I need to put x equal to 0 in the slope equation and x equal to L in the slope equation to get slope at support A and slope at support B. Similarly, to find the maximum deflection, find the maximum deflection, uh, we need to find where slope is 0, deflection will be maximum. So we need to equate the slope equation to 0. So when we equate the slope equation to 0, we'll be getting the equation of this type. And we can see that when x equal to L by 2, uh, this will be the, condition, the equation will get satisfied. Therefore, at x equal to L by 2, deflection will be maximum. So when we put x equal to L by 2 in the general equation for deflection, we'll be getting maximum deflection as 5 by 384 WL44 EA. Okay, 5 by 3 to WL44 by EA. Okay. So this will be the maximum deflection in case of simply supported beam subjected to UDF. So the derivation also we should uh, teach the teach our students as well. These are all standard loading case. Simply supported beam with central point load. The slope will be WL squared by 16 at supports and maximum deflection will be WL cube by 48 EA. And similarly, in case of simply supported beam with UDL, Okay, the maximum uh, slope will be WL cube by 24 EA and deflection will be 5 by 384 WL 4 by EA. So these things we should uh, tell them because these things will help in case of uh, uh, competitive examination. So in competitive examinations, there may be direct questions as well as indirect questions. So direct questions will be uh, similar. They will be giving a simply supported beam uh, with the UDL. What is the maximum deflection? They'll ask like that. So we need to apply the equation and uh, get the value of the difference. That will be given. Four values will be given. You need to find the best or correct value. The indirect questions will be like this. That is, we have a uh, cantilever beam or we have a simply supported beam. Okay? We have a simply supported beam with subjected to UDL. Okay? The beam, the depth, if the depth of the beam is increased twice, the depth of the beam is increased twice, the deflection will get reduced by, they'll give some amount. So that in that case, we, we can't uh, derive the entire equation and then so we need to remember the deflection equation and need to substitute and tell the uh, result quickly where, where the whether the deflection will get reduced or increased. So when you increase the depth, when you increase the depth, so when you increase the depth, de definitely deflection will get reduced. We should uh, teach ourselves how it get reduced because when you increase the depth, the moment of inertia gets increased. Yeah. The moment of inertia gets increased. And this moment of inertia component is in the denominator. So when you use go for increased depth, that since it is in the denominator, then it, the deflection gets reduced. So they will ask like that. If the depth is increased twice, the deflection gets reduced by how amount. What will be the amount of uh, reduction? So there we need to uh, teach our students how I plays a major role in finding, deciding the deflection value. So I is B D Q by 12. So B will be constant. Okay, width is constant. Depth is increased twice. So D cube. So D cube means two power three. So the deflection will get reduced eight, eight times. Likewise, we should teach them our student. So we'll uh, we should teach them the double integration full derivation also as well. How to apply to uh, uh, questions of competitive examination. So that also we need. Now this is a very good example for Michaelis method when you have uh, two loads or more than two loads. How uh, effectively the Michaelis method could be employed. Okay, say we have a simply supported beam with uh, two point loads. Say 10 kiloton load at 1.5 meters and 15 kiloton load at uh, 3.5 meters from the left end. Okay, so we need to find the slope at the supports as well. We need to find the deflection under the load points and also the maximum deflection and also the maximum deflection. So this will be a very good example for uh, teaching our students uh, this uh, Michaelis method in an effective manner. So let us see. So as usual, we need to start with finding support reactions. Okay, to find support reactions, we need to make use of sigma v equal to zero and sigma m equal to zero. So when we use sigma v equal to zero, upward positive, upward positive, R A minus ten minus fifteen plus R B. Okay, R A upward, R B upward. These two do, uh, loads are downward. Therefore, R A minus ten minus fifteen plus rb equal to 0, therefore ra plus rb equal to 25 kilonewton, 
that will be the first equation then using sigma m equal to 0 and taking moments of all forces about a okay we need to take moments of all forces about a so we have this 10 kilonewton load we have this 15 kilonewton load and we have this reaction so this 10 will produce a moment of 10 into 1.5 this 15 kilonewton will produce a moment of 15 into 3.5 this rb will produce a moment of rb into 4.5 this load will produce a clockwise moment. This load will produce a clockwise moment, whereas reaction will produce an anti-clockwise moment. Thereby, we can find the value of Rb. So once you know the value of Rb, we know that Ra plus Rb equal 25 kilo, and therefore Ra can be formed. OK. So, and similarly, uh, this EA value will be useful for numerical examples, okay, EA value, because we, finally we need to substitute uh, the denominator the denominator EA values. So, Young's modulus you will be having in Newton per mm square, and I value will be having millimeter power 4, therefore we will be getting EA as Newton millimeter squared, and then convert and have it as kilonewton meter squared. Always when we, when we are given numerical examples, uh, let us teach our students to make or have this EA value, to have this EA value in kilonewton meter squared. The reason is the applied load is in kilonewton and the distances are in meters. The distances are in meters. Therefore, we need to convert and have it in kilonewton meter squared. Okay. Now, to find the support reactions, as I discussed, sigma V equals to upward positive, RA plus RB equals 25. Then taking moments about uh, A, we'll be getting this. So, RB equals 15 kilonewton. Therefore, RA equal to 10 kilonewton. Now, mark the support reactions. Mark the support reactions 10 kilonewton. Here it is 15 kilonewton. Applied load 10 kilonewton. Applied load 15 kilonewton. Okay. Now, in this example, we have three portions portion AC, portion CD, portion DB. First, let us take portion AC. So, bending moment at XX. Bending moment at XX. So, 10 into X will be the bending moment in this portion. 10 into X. So left clockwise, left clockwise is positive. Therefore, plus 10 into x, plus 10 into x. So mxx equal to 10x will be the equation for this portion AC. Now let us move the section to portion CD. So in portion CD, the first clearly mark the distance between this section and this reaction. Similarly, mark the distance between this uh, section and this load because these things will be helpful for finding bending moment. Therefore, distance between section X and this 10 kilonewton load is X. Distance between this section X and this 10 kilonewton load will be X minus 1.2. Okay, X minus 1.5. Sorry, X minus 1.5 will be this distance. Okay. So, bending over at section XX will be equal to this 10 into X minus 10 into X minus 1.5. Because this produces left clockwise and this is left anticlockwise. So, left clockwise positive, left anticlockwise negative. Therefore, this 10 into X left to clockwise 10 into x minus 10 into x minus 1.5 okay 10 is the force and distance is x minus 1.5 therefore you'll be getting 10x minus 10 into x minus 1.5 now we'll move the section to portion db okay portion db so if you find bending moment here this 10 into x so uh, let us instruct the students to mark these distances first Mark these distances first before finding bending moment because while finding bending moment, the distances are more important. So, distance between this point load and section is x, distance between this 10 kilonewton load and this section is x minus 1.5, and distance between this 15 kilonewton load and our section x is x minus 3.5. How we got this 3.5? Because this is around uh, 1.5 meter and this is 2 meter. So, 2 plus 1.5, 3.5. So, x minus 3.5. Okay. So, first mark the distances clearly, then we can very easily write the equation, bending moment equation, okay? So, Mxx will be equal to 10 into x, okay? 10 into x minus this 10 into x minus 1.5 minus 15 into x minus 3.5 it will be the bending moment in portion db, okay? Now, we have the differential equation Ea d squared by dx would equal to minus Mxx. Therefore, Ea d squared by dx would equal to minus of, open the bracket, for portion AC, first portion, first portion we have 10x. So write the 10x here. Write the 10x here. 
put a dotted line or partition put a partition or dotted line for the second portion that is for portion cd we have 10x minus 10 into x minus 1.5 so the additional term what is the additional term compared to these two comparing these two can anyone tell the additional term there is a common term in these two and additional term here what is the common term and what is the additional term Anyone of you? The common term 10x. Common term is 10x. Additional term is? Uh, 10 into x minus. Minus. Minus 10 into x minus. Minus we need to yes, say. Yes. Okay. So minus 10 into x minus. So that's what we are writing after the partition line. Okay. So before partition, write the common term. Then after the partition, write only the extra term. Minus 10 into x minus 1.5 and put another partition because we have one more portion db so in the portion db now the common term is 10x minus 10 into x minus 1.5 is the common term that we have already written so the additional term involved is uh, minus 15 into x minus 3.5 okay so we need to write this additional term alone after the second partition or second dotted line okay this is the uh, main advantage in Michaelis method okay we can accommodate the entire all the equation of all the portions in one equation using with the use of partition line or dotted line okay so this 10x for portion ac 10x minus 10 into x minus 1.5 for the next portion 10x minus 10 into x minus 1.5 minus 15 into x minus 1 for the entire thing therefore put partition like this with minus sign outside because this minus mxx now operate this minus sign inside you'll be getting EID squared by dx to minus 10x plus 10 into x minus 1.5 plus 15 into x minus 3.5. This is equation 1. Now, integrating this equation 1 with respect to x, EIDY by dx, so EIDY by dx equal to minus 10 x squared by 2 plus constant of integration C1 dotted line plus 10 into, we need to integrate this as a single term, not separate term. So, x minus 1.5 whole squared by 2. Similarly, here, 15 into x minus 3.2 whole squared by 2. This is equation 2. Then integrating this again, EIY minus 10 x cube by 6 plus C1x plus C2 dotted line 10 into x minus 1.5 squared, x minus 1.5 whole cube because single term, x minus 1.5 whole cube by 3 already 2 is the depot 6. Then 15 into x minus 3.2 whole cube by 3 already 2 is the depot 6. This is equation 3. Okay. Now we need to use the boundary conditions to obtain the constants of integration. So the boundary conditions will be when x equal to 0, y equal to 0. That is at support A, deflection is 0. At support B, also deflection is, at support B also deflection is 0. Therefore, at support B means when x equal to 4 point, because we measure x from the left end, left extreme end. Therefore, x equal to 4.5 means that the indicates the other support. Now, we can use these two boundary conditions in this equation. So when you use the first boundary condition, we need to use up to the first dotted line. That is more important. We should not use the first boundary condition for the entire equation. Or we can't use, we cannot use this boundary condition for the entire equation. The reason is x equal to 0 lies in portion AC. Therefore, uh, use this boundary condition up to first dotted line. That is more important. Using boundary condition 1 in equation 3, there is a missing. You need to write up to first dotted line up to first dotted line you get c2 equal to 0 then using the second boundary condition for the entire equation how can we use for the entire equation because x equal to 4.5 lies in portion cd okay or db portion db therefore we need to use the entire equation okay therefore when we use the entire equation we'll be getting the value of c1 so c1 is 23.194 then we'll substitute the values of c1 and c2 EI DV by DX equal to minus NX square by 2 plus 23.198 dotted line plus 10 into X minus 1.4 whole square by 2 dotted line plus 15 into X minus 3.3 whole square by 2. And then general equation for deflection will be Y equal to EI Y equal to minus 10 X cube by 6 plus 23.194 X dotted line plus 10 into X minus 1.4 whole cube by 6 plus 15 into X minus 3.3 whole cube by 6. Now, since we have obtained the general equation for slope and deflection, now we can find 
slope and deflection at any required points. So slope at A. I want slope at left to support A. So put x equal to 0. Put x equal to 0 in A. In equation A. In equation A up to first dotted line. Up to first dotted line. Okay. This up to first dotted line x equal to 0. You'll get 23.184 divided by A. A value you already have, have in uh, kilometer meter square. Therefore, you'll be getting the slope at A in radians. 0.122 radians. Then slope at B. Put x equal to 4.5 in the entire equation A. You'll be getting uh, slope at B radians. Then deflection at C. That is deflection at C means under the load point here. I want deflection at C. So at C means I need to put x equal to 1.5 meter up to first daughter line. I'll get deflection at C. To find deflection at D, I need to put x equal to 3.5 meters up to second daughter line. Okay, up to second daughter line. I'll get deflection at D. So we see we might have done this. Okay, deflection at C, put x equal to 1.5 in equation uh, B up to first daughter line. I'll be getting y equal to 29.16 divided by EA. Therefore, 29.16 divided by EA value is this. Therefore, you'll get this much. Similar deflection at D, put x equal to 3.5 meter in equation up to second daughter line. This is more important. Okay, up to first daughter line, up to second daughter line is more important because uh, we need to see where the point lies in which portion the point of interest lying that portion up to that portion we need to use the equation that's why that's why we say up to first daughter line up to second daughter line like this okay so this is how we should find the deflection under the load points deflection under the load points now to obtain the maximum deflection to obtain the maximum deflection any idea what we should do find the maximum deflection See, this is the deflected shape of the simply support beam subjected to two point loads. So, the maximum deflection occurs in this portion or is assumed to occur in this portion CD. Okay. So, please, this point is we should make clear our students very clear because uh, they should be in a position to equate slope to zero. So, either they should equate up to first daughter line or up to second daughter line, they will have confusion. Okay. So, for that, you should teach them clearly that. The maximum deflection is supposed to occur in portion CD. Maximum deflection is support, supposed to occur in portion CD. Therefore, equate the slope equation up to second dotted line to zero. Okay. Equate the slope up to second dotted line to zero. You'll be getting X value. And when you get this X value, that X value will uh, decide or will confirm whether your assumption is right or wrong. Okay. We are assuming that maximum deflection occurs in this region. So my x value should be more than 2. My x value should be more than 2, but less than how much? Can you tell me? x value should be more than 2 meters. Sorry, more than 1.5 meters because AC is 1.5 meters. More than 1.5 meters, but less than... <laughs> less than... Ah, yes, 3.5. How it is 3.5? Because we have 1.5 up to this and another 2, therefore 3.5. So if you get the answer uh, within this limit, then it indicates the assumption is correct. Or else we need to equate the entire slope equation to 0 and find again. Or if, uh, if you get less than uh, 1.5, then we can uh, equate up to first daughter line to 0. So this is how we should find where slope is 0. Because at where slope is zero, the deflection will be maximum. So we need to put this 2.296 meter in the deflection equation up to second daughter line and find the maximum deflection. So maximum deflection is 17.85 mm. You can check the deflection at point C is 15.4. Deflection at point D is 12.1. And the maximum deflection is uh, greater than these two. Okay. So this is how we should find the maximum deflection. Now, we can uh, have in the examination, we can have examples of this type also. Okay. So, this is also a very good example. That is where partial UDL. UDL, we have partial UDL. So, in case of partial UDL, uh, in, the, in the main uh, principle or concept in McAllis method is uh, in, the, uh, in the bending moment equation, in the bending moment equation, we need to get common terms for every portion. 
you can you might have observed in all the examples which we have studied so far uh, say if i take pores in ac and if i consider pores in cd or cb then there will be at least one common term okay but here in this example if i consider pores in ac and if i find bedivoted xx and if i consider pores in cb and if i consider bedivoted xx i will not get a common term because here i will get one equation i here i will get some other equation which will not involve any common term so if i involve if i do not involve common term then we can't use mccallis method okay we need to do only by double integration method so double integration method will be time consuming because uh, if you have two portions then we, this will involve two constants of integration and this portion will involve two constants of integration and it will take more time so how to uh, solve this using mccallis method for problems of this type so as usual first find the support reactions okay find the support reactions so using sigma v equal to 0 ra plus rb minus 12 into 4 equal to 0 therefore ra plus rb equal to 48 kilo newton and using sigma m equal to 0 and taking moments of all forces about a all force about a while getting 12 into 4 into 4 by 2 minus rb into 6 equal to 0 therefore rb equal to some value substituting i'll be getting ra value okay so ra rb is known so mark R A as 32 kilonewton, mark R B 16 kilonewton. First, write Benny Wood equation for portion A C. Portion A C. Consider section X X at X distance from the left hand. So Benny Wood at X X will be equal to this 32 into X, 32 into X. And this produces clockwise moment, left to clockwise positive. Then U D L. Force is 12 into X. Force is 12 into X. Distance is X by 2. And this produces anti-clockwise moment, left anti-clockwise. Therefore, 32x minus 6x squared. Okay. Then come to portion CB. Come to portion CB. So here we have written the reason. In order to get common term in MXX, we ex we extra added the UDL in both upward and downward direction. That is, we need to add add UDL and balance UDL like this. Okay. So I will add. Actually, there is no UDL in this portion. However, I will add udl and i will balance that udl by upward load so i am giving downward load and that is getting balanced by upward load now to consider section xx consider section xx and try to write the equation minute equation now uh, 32 force into distance x 32 x okay i think this is clear left to clockwise then the entire downward udl up to this point entire downward load up to this point is 12 into x into x by 2. 12 into x into x by 2. Okay. Then we have the small upward UDL. We have the small upward UDL. So upward UDL will be producing left clockwise. So plus 12 into this distance or this length will be x minus 4. How it is x minus 4? Because totally we have x, x distance and this is 4 meters. Therefore, x minus 4 will be this distance. So force will be 12 into x minus 4 will be the force. And distance will be x minus 4 by 2. So if I simplify this, I'll be getting 32x minus 6x squared plus 6 into x minus 4 whole squared. Now, if you compare these two portions, I have common terms 32x minus 6x squared, 32x minus 6x squared, and I have an additional term. So I can have additional any any number of additional terms, but I should have at least one common term in every uh, portions. So to get common term only, we are adding load and we are deleting the load. Okay, we are adding load and we are subtracting the load or balancing the load. So this, by doing this, the original uh, problem will not get altered. Okay, I will not get disturbed. The condition will not get disturbed. Okay. So this uh, example we should teach our students because in examination you may get a partial UDL like this. So in case of partial UDL, uh, if we result in with a different MXX equation without common term, then we can't uh, afford to uh, Macaulay's method. So to use Macaulay's method effectively. We need to add UDL and we need to balance the UDL and we need to write common terms or get common terms like this. So once you get common terms, then uh, EAD square AB square will minus MXX. So minus of MXX for portion AB is 32X minus 6X squared. Put a partition or dotted line and write only the extra term. Extra term will compare uh, comparing these two is 6 into X minus 4 whole square. That is equation 1. Then double integration. We need to do integrate twice. So integrating one once a d a b d is equal to minus 30 x square by 2 plus 6 x square by 2 plus c1. 
plus minus 6 into this term should be considered as a single term x minus 4 holds q by 3 then integrating again we will get e a y equal to minus 30 x q by 6 plus 6 x power 4 by 12 plus c1 x plus c2 then minus 6 into x minus 4 power 4 by 4 already 3 is there therefore 12. Then we need to substitute the boundary conditions when x equal to 0 y equal to 0 when x equal to 6 meters y equal to 0. So use boundary condition 1 up to daughter line and find the value of c2. Use x equal to 6 in the entire equation find the value of c1. Substitute c1 c2 and get the general equation for slope and deflection. We will be getting general equation for slope and deflection. Then find slope at supports A, slope at support B. Okay. Then uh, find deflection at point C and then maximum deflection. So maximum deflection occurs where slope is zero. So equate the slope equation in force in AC. So we know how it deflects, how it deflects. Okay, it will be deflecting like this. So maximum deflection we can expect near C. We can expect near C. That's why we need to equate the slope equation up to daughter line, up to daughter line to zero. Okay, up to daughter line, we need to equate the slope equation to zero. So this is the general equation for slope. Up to this point, we need to equate to zero. Find the value of x, then put that value in the deflection equation to get the maximum deflection. Okay. Similarly, this is another example. We have partial UDL. In addition, we have point load also. So in this case, also we need to add a UDL in this portion and we need to balance UDL in this portion so that we'll be getting common term for portion CD as well for portion DB. The EA value is given as 18 to 10 power 12 Newton millimeter square. We need to determine the slope at the supports, deflection at the uh, C and D and also the maximum deflection. Any clarification, we get it, we please get it clarified. This example we are going to see now. So, first to find the support reactions using sigma v equals 0 upward positive and sigma m equals 0 clockwise positive, we'll be getting R A R B. So mark R A, mark R B. First consider portion A C, portion A C, M X X will be equal to left clockwise, 58.7 into X, left clockwise is positive. Then this UDL, 20 into x is the force, x by 2 is the distance, so minus 20x into x by 2. So this will be the venue equation for portion AC. Then portion CD. So before going to CD, we need to add UDL, we need to balance UDL. What is the reason we do this? Why we need to add and delete? The reason we should tell our students clearly why we are adding load and balancing. Because in order to get common terms in the bending moment equations, we are adding and deleting loads. Okay. So portion CD, the bending moment at xx will be equal to uh, this 58.7 into x minus 20 into x into x by 2. Then this upward load 20 into x minus 3.5 into x minus 3.5 by 2. Therefore, we're getting 56.7x minus 10x squared plus 10 into this. Then portion DB. Again, there also we have upward load and downward load. Therefore, when you want here will be 58.7 into x. Okay, 58.7 into x. Then 20 into x into x by 2. Okay, then this upward load will be 20 into x minus 3.5 because up to this we have. So x into 3.5 into x minus 3.5 by 2. Now, then minus this point load is here. Okay, point load is here. Okay, so x minus 3.5, how? Because we have uh, 2 and 1.5, 3.5 up to this point. So we need to use this video. Therefore, x minus 3.5 into x minus 3.52, and this downward load 15 into x minus 5. So once you mark these distances clearly, then uh, we can easily get the many wood equations. Then go to EA d squared by dx squared equal to minus mxx. So we have three portions. So write the equation carefully in portion. A, B, we have 58.7x minus 10x squared, 56 minus 10x squared is same in all equations. Therefore, we can have in first daughter line to this. And for the second portion, this is the additional term, 10 into x minus 3.5 whole squared. Then for the last portion, 15 into x minus 5 is the additional term. Then we need to integrate twice 
integrating once, we'll get C1. Integrating twice, we'll get C2. While integrating, we need to integrate this x minus 3.5 as a single term. So x minus 3 point whole power 4 by 4. Similarly, x minus 5 whole cube by 3. Similarly, here, we need to integrate. Okay, x power 4 by 4, we'll get. Already 3 is there, therefore, this. Therefore, again, substituting the boundary conditions, when x equal to 0, y equal to 0, and when x equal to 7.5, y equal to 0, we will be getting values of constant. Substitute in the equation, you'll get general equation for slope will be this, and general equation for deflection will be this. And we will be interested in finding slope at the supports, deflection at C, deflection at D, maximum deflection at all. So to find slope at A, uh, put x equal to 0 in the e uh, equation, slope equation up to first daughter line, up to first daughter line. Then to find slope at B, you can use the entire equation. Similarly, deflection at uh, C, that is a C point, we need to up to use up to daughter line. Simply see here, slope at B, deflection, deflection at C, YC. So put x equal to 3.5 meters, because uh, C point lies at 3.5 meters. So put x equal to 3.5 meter in equation uh, B up to first daughter line. And then YC will be obtained. Similarly, to find YD, we need to put X equal to 5 meter in the equation up to second daughter line. Then to find the maximum deflection, slope equates slope to 0. Okay. So here we need to assume we have some assumption that is okay, this beam will deflect like this. This beam will deflect like this. This beam will be deflecting like this. And we are assuming that maximum deflection occurs in the uh, UDL portion. With that assumption, with that assumption, I will equate the slope equation up to first daughter line to zero. I hope you understand the concept. Okay. Up to first daughter line or up to second daughter line, we need to make assumption. And if the assumption goes wrong, then we need to change the assumption and then repeat. That is the procedure. Okay. Initially, because we will not be uh, knowing where the maximum deflection occurs. So initially, we ask, let us assume that maximum deflection occurs in portion AC. So when it occurs in portion AC, uh, equate the slope equation of portion AC, that is up to first daughter line to zero, and find the value of x. That x value will uh, indicate you whether your assumption is right or wrong. Okay, That x value will indicate you whether the assumption is correct or wrong. If you get uh, more than this 3.5, then you need to make a uh, change assumption and you need to equate up to second order line to zero and find the value of uh, x. Once you know the value of x, uh, substitute in the deflection equation up to first order line or up to second order line and get the maximum deflection. Okay. Similarly, you can uh, train our students by giving more number of loads like this. Say portion AC, CD, DE, EB. We have four portions. So this portion will have one common term, and this will have portion will have some some other two common terms, three, four, like which you can equate and you can ask them to compute the uh, say in this case we can ask them to compute uh, slope at supports A and B, deflection at C, deflection at D, deflection at E, and also the maximum deflection. So maximum deflection may occur either in between C and D or in between D and E. So initially, uh, we should assume that uh, slope is or deflection is maximum in this portion C, D. And equate the slope equation, okay, equate the slope equation up to for, for portion up to C, D to 0 and find where it is 0. Find the deflection. If the assumption is wrong, then assume here. So either in portion C, D or D, it will be the deflection will be maximum because we know that uh, the maximum deflection may be near the center of the span, near the center of the span. Okay. So these are the examples to demonstrate the uh, McCallis method of integration. If you have any doubt, get it clarified. We have seen a uh, single point load. We have seen UDL. We have seen uh, partial UDL, uh, two point loads, and now three point loads. Hope you have covered all the type of uh, problems involving in the McCallis method. And double integration method also, we have seen a cantilever example. Similarly, in simply supported beam also with UDL it can be treated as double integration method.
मैडम यस सर थैंक यू वेरी मच एनी क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम द पार्टिसिपेंट्स सर इज इट पॉसिबल दैट वी कैन गेट द नोट्स व्हिच यू आर प्रेजेंटिंग यस सर यस सर आई विल सेंड टू मैडम ओके ओके सर थैंक यू and i also request you all okay to prepare uh, you say mostly all, you will all be in all be in teaching faculty okay, lb teaching faculty so better uh, develop notes like this uh, with the audio explanation in every slide that may help our students to learn uh, to go for self learning say if i give this slide to my student then whatever written here will be available explained here in this audio so that way you can learn effectively no one is required to support him while he learn okay you can do a self study and similarly you can refer any number of times any time if you wants clarification okay so by instead of this video notes or that this type of will be locked by less space as well it will be more effective and it has uh, we have uh, produced good results out of this after this type of uh, notes to students with audio explanation uh, everyone Uh, most eight, more than eighty percent are doing well, are getting a uh, yes grade or a grade, okay? because that will help learning process. Because we are PPT, simply simply sending the PPT alone won't help. Because just uh, this will be available in any textbook, okay? All these steps will be available, but we should explain how we got this step, how we got into this step, how we, why we need to. Uh, put up to first daughter line. Why we need to put up to second daughter? That things should be explained and to paste it here as audio. Okay. Thank you, Professor Satish Kumar sir. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Department of Civil Engineering, I thank you very much for this uh, wonderful lecture. a uh, very detailed explanation and uh, you have covered all the types of problems also it has been very wonderful sir thank you so much so thank you all for your uh, patient listening and thank to the svc college as well the uh, principal and the hod and the faculty of uh, civil department thank you all so you can uh, get clarified any clarification not only now at any time you can okay. thank you thank you thank you sir thank you very much sir okay ma'am thank you ma'am Shall I leave? Yes, sir. Yes, I'll. Sir.